What's going on? It's Glendon Cameron here. The Hustler Mindset Project will be back in effect. Let me explain a few things because there is some confusion. Kind of like the weather. It's snowing here. Never thought that would happen, but it is. Typically, I'm doing, well, not typically, uh, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something very, very different this year. Um, Normally in the past, and if you didn't know, I deleted my email list. I mean, just sent out, hey, this is the last email you're going to get from Glendon Cameron unless you go on this list. So if you're like thinking you're going to get some emails from me and you didn't get that email, you're not. So you have to subscribe to the new list. What? Whoa, 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 wait. Before you subscribe, let me tell you what you're getting yourself into. Um, I'm going into totally different territory. I've essentially made really good deals on the storage auction stuff, the Craigslist stuff. So that's what I figured 75% of the list wanted and 25% was with this new direction. And just like, you know, that couple that fell apart, you know, no one cheated or no one abused anyone. It's just there's no more loving feeling. It's just time for us to part ways. So I delete the list and I'm starting all over again. And part of this new thing is I have been doing you a disservice because I have been trying to cram and shove upper level concepts to people who were not prepared. And if you're insulted, good. You should be insulted because it's not my fault you weren't prepared. It's your fucking fault. And part of that is anytime that you give people tools and new techniques of doing something and they don't really get that foundation together, it's just going to fall apart sooner or later. It's just going to fucking fall apart. And that, that's what's been happening with some people. Because some people like, hey, they were really killing it. And then it fell apart. So the new thing. New Hustler Mindset Project, new site, new everything, and we're going to start with a new class called Disruptive Money. Now, what is Disruptive Money? What if I said for years, manage your money or your money will manage you? If your money is managing you, and let's identify and define money managing you is if you need to do some, but you got to get weight, get paid from your job or your business to do that, your money is managing you. You're not managing your money. Your money's managing you. If you have to wait to get paid two or three times before you can do something because you got to make little payments, or if you're renting stuff from Aaron's Rent to Own or one of these other places, your money is managing you because you are stupid if you can't do simple math and realize that if you save $30 a month for 10 months is 300 bucks and that is a very good used washer and dryer set off craigslist so if you're paying 30 40 50 i don't even know how much it is it could even be 60 bucks a month for a washer and dryer for all i know maybe more if you saved for three months you know maybe put away 500 600 bucks that's going to get you a very good washer and dryer set i'm talking about with bells and whistles and tickles your nipples and stuff when it's done it's like come on in here tickle tickle done so if you're doing that stuff renting tvs your money's managing you if you're going to the title pond place and you've been there several times your money is managing you you're not managing your money now i know this is going to sound really really insane it is not how much money you make i know you're going you're glendon if i only made more money dude if you don't understand I'm working two jobs. I'm working three jobs. There is this insipid song talking about, I don't have enough money for rent, but I got just enough to get me in the club. So I'm going to go in there until my time is over. And I'm just sitting there like, what the hell is this stuff? And it's part of the culture that you should be happy before you should be responsible. That's the culture. Be happy before you're responsible. And then when you're unhappy because you were irresponsible, you should blame someone else. That's the culture, and that's the problem. So disruptive money is psychology techniques, mostly psychology, because, once again, it is not how much money you make. If you make minimum wage, this disruptive money will improve your life in a matter of weeks and months. If you make 100000 disruptive money will crank up your life very quickly. Because one of the things, and this is something I talked about, and this is something that I've rejected. It's like, the more money you make, the more money you spend. Who the fuck says you must do that? 
Can you point them out to me? Can you find these people, them, they, who are these people? You, when you manage your money, do not spend more money when you make more money. Part of disruptive money is the proper allocation of resources that are there and bringing more resources to the fold. Because see, if once you manage these resources really well in the beginning, then you bring in new resources, you'll start to see the stack. You'll start to see accumulation. There'll be like snow coming down really quick. You'll be like, well, man, let's go out and build a snowman or let's go out and build a cash man. Because once again, and I'm going to say this and there, it will, I will be very repetitive. It's not how much money you make. I live on a very small income. The money that comes in is ridiculously small because I don't have a lot of obligations. And see, well, another thing with disruptive money, I'm going to talk to you about retirement in a way that no one else did. Well, you need 1.5 million. You need 2.8 million. You... How many of you have a grandmother or a grandfather or uncle, someone, you know, someone who's, you know, 70, 80, some, they have a house that's paid for, car they maybe had 20, 30 years to still run, it's in good service, and they're getting like a check about that big, and they're freaking independent, and they're taking care of themselves, and they're retired, and they don't need you or anyone else to help them out. How many of you have people like that? I got a lot of them on one side of the family. There's a bunch of them on one side of the family. The other side of the family, eh, not so much. But... And these people are not millionaires and they don't have stacks of cash and they don't have silver and gold everywhere. What they did was they were responsible before they had fun. I'm going to give you a scenario. Go right now. Say you are Bob. No, no. F you know, fuck Bob. No. And all the Bobs out there, I'm just kidding. Say you are Brad. And Brad, you're 36 years old. And Brad, you make... 50 grand a year. You know, you, you have a little education. You have a halfway decent job. And you're living like everyone else. You have the best car you can get with your 50 grand. You're living in the best place you can for your 50 grand. And at the end of the month, there's not a lot left over. You know, you're putting money in your 401k. And, you know, if you do anything extra, you either have to get an extra job, you know, do Uber, sell some stuff on eBay to bring a little extra cash so you can go out and buy a steak dinner for you and your girl or, you know, take a trip because your primary income is not enough. Now, in your mind, Brad, you're going, well, it's not enough money. Mm -mm, nope, that's not it. It's how you spend your money, Brad. That's right, Brad. You're spending your money the fucking wrong way. So what we're going to do is take out the magic erase board and we're going to erase your fucking life. We're going to just fucking erase all that shit and start from scratch. You still with me? Did I erase you? No. Okay, you're good. So what are we going to do? You now have that same $50,000 your job, but you have a car that you pay cash for. So poof, that $300 to $800 car note is gone. So that money goes back into Brad's super bat cave stash. All right. So you're like, it's just you and your parrot. So instead of having this three to four bedroom house and it's just you and this parrot and you're paying, you know, 1200 to maybe 2000 a month on mortgage sum, you like, you know what? It's just me. I'm Brad. I'm the fucking man. I'm going to get me a duplex. Most duplexes are not in the best neighborhood, but they're not like totally torn down. So you get your duplex and you take and you're paying maybe 25% less than you're paying on your mortgage. But now you have this, this other thing over here that's like you can rent out. And now you're only paying three, 400 bucks a month living expenses because someone else is paying the rest because you rent that side out. So let's stop. Hit freeze. Okay. I'm going to freeze your ass. All right. So just on those two adjustments, right? This is disruptive money or smart money. Or There's people who've done this before. This isn't rocket science. You have realized 600 to maybe uh, 1200 bucks a month back into the bat stash. That's not going into the outgo. I'm trying to be like everyone else stash. So now you've got like 1200 bucks. Wait a minute. And you have an asset that's appreciating that someone else is helping you pay for. And your stress level is. It's like way down. You're like, 
Huh. And then they're fifty thousand dollars your job. So you wake up one day, you go there, and they say, "Brad, fuck you. We don't need you anymore. You know you've been a good boy, but we don't need you anymore." And you're like, "Okay." So you go back home. And you just sit down, and because your stress level is low and your expense level is low, you do something that many people who are in that position, because their expense level is high and their stress level is high, is you think. You know, like, okay, well, but the renter is pretty good, and um, so I've got like a budgetary shortfall. I need to make like 500 bucks to replace, you know, my income, you know, because that was your portion, electric, electricity and stuff, because your car is paid for. So when you wake up in the morning, it's still going to be there because you don't have a car payment. So you got your car that's paid for. You don't have any debt. And you got someone over there paying half or more of your mortgage. So now you're like, well, wait a minute. You you have because the beak, the secret back cave stash, you could live for months or maybe a few years and not actually work. It wouldn't be glorious but it wouldn't be horrible so you're still making the same 50 you're still doing that and you are able to not just survive but you can thrive because see so you know since you're brad and now you know you know the secret hustler university pro i mean the hustler mindset project handshake since you know you're brad and you know the hustler mindset project handshake you know all that shit and you've been in there you go out and you enhance that side of the gig that was only making you 50 60 dollars a month because you were taking your time and you were building it right because it was about disruptive money managing what you have and bringing more in versus either saving as much as you can or you know trying to Bowl out and make all this money so you could just like, hey, you know, yeah, I just blew 1500 bucks on a pair of shoes. And you know what I mean, shit, because, you know, next week I'm getting the, I'm getting it back again, you know, because I'm living like, no, you're not that fucking fool. You're Brad. You're the new and improved Brad. You've got a big ass D on your chest for fucking disruptive. So you're doing that and it's like, ah, oh. so you've had your business for six months or maybe a year or so. Then what you do is since you now no longer have a job. You just like, well, I'll get up and I'll just really push hard on my business. And whoa, what do you know? In a matter of weeks, because it was already started, it was already vetted, it was already validated, you have replaced your $50,000 a year job with business income and you've cut your fucking work hours in half. That is disruptive money. See, what I realized a long freaking time ago, this chase to be a millionaire, this chase to be a billionaire is fruitless and stupid. If you create a product that serves millions, you'll become a billionaire. But if you simply go out there chasing billionaire status, boss status, just because you want to be a boss with nothing to fucking offer the world, then you are past boo-boo the fool. You're just damn stupid. And that's this dream and fallacy that many people are uh, chasing. Like, once again, I'll tell you, I've lived off a very small amount of money, but all my furniture is paid for. TV's paid for. This iMac's paid for. The MacBook Pro's paid for. The iPhone's, the tech. It's all paid for. So there's not this huge, hold on, 10, 9, Eight, psh, you don't even get to the full account because your your checking account is a freaking lunch pad. Money doesn't even have time to sit on this ass and chill and smoke a cigarette or drink a cold one because as soon as it's in there, it's out of there just like that. And that's because your money is managing you versus you managing your money. So there's this new, well, it's not really new. It's something I've done with a few people and I do a lot of times with uh, a lot of business people. Because many folks don't have these accounts set up. But once you set these accounts up and once you follow this plan, you will see more money in your life, regardless of how much money you make. Also, something else I'm doing. Uh, the Facebook group is closed. And there's people in there and they can do whatever the hell they want. So if you opt out of there, you can't come back. No, you can't add your friend. No, Boo Boo the dog can't come. No, it's closed. I'm going to open up a new group. It will not be on Facebook. It will be a paid group. 
Now, what will be in this pay group, Glendon? Good question, Brad. Glad you asked. It's going to be how to make money. It's going to be about digital disruption. And that's it. And it will be a private group, um, probably 10, 20 bucks a month. Because one of the things that I realized, and I've, you know, for the folks in the Facebook group, because um, I told them I wasn't going to share any more stuff because I haven't posted any offers or anything in there because it's just a social group now. That's essentially what it is. That I've been testing them because, you know, like I said, I'm not in town right now. And um, I went away and I didn't really post nothing this weekend. Was hanging with my friend and having a lot of fun. And I noticed when I'm not there, it's not too much that happens in the group. And then when I started posting and starting contributions, and that's effort and that's time and that's work. And I, I love it and it's fun, but it can be draining. And I realized that if I had 100 people, 200 people, and they were paying, like I said, because it's going to be economical, you know, like, you know, 10 to 20 bucks a month, something like that, for that group only and the information that we'll be doing there. Because uh, it's going to be ongoing, it's going to be fresh, and it's going to be current. Now, if you get into the Hustler Mindset Project relaunch, yeah, you'll be part of that group, and once you what you pay for the Hustle University will cover that. But if you want, because this is what I've noticed, when people want just certain things. It's like I recently, under the video, tested like a, this disruptive circus, which will be disruptive money, it'll be the disruptive economy, it'll be disruptive wealth, it'll be disruptive man. And once again, uh, when I'm get it all tricked out, it'll be like a thousand buck product. Because see, I'm actually doing something a little different. Many people put out these products and then they come down in price later on. I am building these products and I'm making them go up in price later on. So you want to get in now. So if you just want that and don't want to be part of the Hustler Mindset Project, the full deal, you should. I'm telling you, you really should. That's cool because I'll make some just for you. And it's like 150 You get in, you have to pay nothing else ever again. However, you're not going to get the other stuff that's going to pop off up in, you know, Hustler's the Hustler Mindset Project. So just letting you know that up front and up now, because once again, one of the reasons that the message was muddled, and that's on me, I made some mistakes, was I didn't have um, the clear expectations laid out that I'm laying out now. This is what you get, this is what you pay, and this is it. And also, I made a lot of offers, like for all those folks who came in at the twenty nine ninety five? And there were folks like, I don't know what this fool's gonna do. I'll just sit back and wait. Surprise! <laughs> Please, and I'm, I mean seriously, don't send me any emails like you just found this or it was in your spam folder. I am. I know I look like this, but I'm really not like that. I understand that you want to get that deal and you missed out. And boo hoo, it's fucking too late. Once again, I am the guy that will tell you the truth. I do these videos. I do this stuff to make money. I'm not your friend, I'm not your girlfriend, I'm not your boyfriend, I'm none of this stuff. And sometimes I meet people who come cool and we get real cool, but the primary focus here is to provide a service and a product that helps people. That's the primary focus. And sometimes friendship gets in the fucking way. Because it's like, we've boys and everything, and you know, you're going to hook me up with that thousand dollar product. No, I'm not. I will tell you no in a heartbeat. But essentially, that's what it's going to be. And as I expand the concept, and let me go ahead and just say this disruptive circus is just one aspect of the Hustler Mindset Project. Then there is this, you know, the uh, digital pimping. That's going to be another part of the Hustler Mindset Project. And that's going to be a full, well, it's going to come under the umbrella. Let me be really clear. It's going to, it's going to come under the umbrella and it's really going to be for the folks who pay the most. Let's just say it that way. Because there's, you know, I just kind of opened that up because... Essentially, I'm going to break off modules. If you just want disruptive money, disruptive economy, disruptive wealth, disruptive man, boom, you can just have that. And that's all you get. That's it. That's all you get. And then if you want more, you pay more. And I'm doing that because essentially I have been able to fashion and once again, I don't make like crazy money like you hear all these other folks like, you know, I'm doing 50, 60, 70, 80. I don't, I don't do that per month. I don't do that. But this is what I am doing. I make enough to keep myself out the matrix. I don't deal with traffic. 
Um, pretty much once I get my core work done, I'm free to do as I please. I believe that time that is unencumbered, that you get to do whatever the hell you want, is one of the greatest f sources of wealth there is. And I have that. And one of the reasons I, I make it like that, because it's very important to me that I get up and I chart my day and I do what I want to do and hang out with what I want to hang out with and plan my life on my terms versus being led around the matrix like you must work with these people you hate. You must work with these people who hate you. You must make nice with these folks who would probably slit your throat if they could. You know how stressful that is? And, you know, I have a history of ulcers. I had four bleeding ulcers, bled out, uh, you know, upper GI bleed, and woke up in the emergency room. And if uh, I wasn't with someone, I'd probably be dead. That's reality. So I am very, very aware of keeping my stress level down. And that's why a lot of, you know, that's why I'm real blunt. Because, see, when I say, fuck you, or you don't like it, kiss my ass, that is incredibly, it reduces so much stress. I mean, it's just like, because I'm not going to allow my thoughts of you to harbor in me and pollute me or poison me or do whatever when I could just simply say fuck you get it out and give it to you because you deserve it and we could just go on about life and everyone be happy well I'll be happy because I'm not stressed out so that's going to be part of the disruptive man because essentially I've come across a lot of information a lot of stuff I've been watching and reading and this was really an accident because the second time I got sick was when I was in the hospital for the, for the week. Then the first time is what led me to writing. And I've noticed that other than the cold, that's about all I get because I manage my health, so to speak. And I'm going to keep it that way. And that's something that I'm going to teach you how to do because once you reprogram yourself and get out of this, I got to get all of this money and I got to do all this stuff because most of that is ego. Most of it is ego and it can keep you poor in one aspect of your life. I mean, you, your ego can drive you to build empires and build all this stuff. But at the end of the day, how much time do you have? Do you are you able to lay in bed for an hour in the morning before you get up thinking about hmm, what am I going to do? That? Can you do that? I mean, if your life is so structured that, bam, you got to get up and do this. Bam, you got to do this. 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 The stress, the stress. And I have a video up here like, you know, making fun of people who are going, thank God it's fraudy. And part of that is my insensitivity because I haven't had to deal with that shit in like 15 years that I forgot what it's like to work all fucking week. No time for yourself. Taking five minute showers, running out the door, leaving one job to go to another job. Then when you finally get a day and a half because it's not a full two days off because Sunday's a work night. You just exhale and lose your mind and get drunk and just like, oh, God, it's Friday. Ooh, I can sleep in. That's a horrible fucking way to live, in my opinion. Once again, that's just my opinion. That's a fucking horrible way to live. That you are working five and a half days to have one and a half days to yourself. Do you really think this shit was set up like that? Now, part of changing that <clears throat> is disruptive money. Because let's go ahead and parse it out and put it together. Number one, a lot of the things that you do, you do to earn money. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is the motivation and the psychological signals that are you doing certain things like, you know, I'm not bragging, but when I put on the suit, people are freaking shocked because I look like the man and I don't wear suits and stuff because most of the people I associate with, no, I'm an internet dude. And I proudly announced that I'm an internet dude. And I'm, I'm glad Atlanta and it's just getting bigger and other places I'm looking at moving to. That's cool. Because I actually thought about moving to Austin, Texas. And, um, you know, when you say you're an internet dude in San Francisco, Austin, Texas, Austin, Texas, people are like, oh, okay. You know, you say it in certain parts of the South, I'm in that dude. So what you mean? Tell me, boys, you still don't have no fucking job, huh? Fucking sorry. Or 
criminal. I mean, those are the attitudes of people who have not expanded their consciousness, their mindset, nor their intellectual assets. They're just like, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm going to stay. It was good enough for my grandfather. It's good enough for me. It's going to be good enough for my son. He better not try to ever fucking grow or I kill his ass. I mean, you got people like that because they're afraid that they're going to get left behind. They're afraid that bad things are going to happen. And typically when someone becomes to a new level of consciousness, people do get left behind because you no longer can relate. You can be friendly, but you can no longer relate. So until everyone raises their intellectual game, you're going to have these problems. And it's very, very bad. And I was reading this article about something that was happening in Japan. And I didn't know this. And I lived in Japan, but I never knew. Actually, I did know this, but I didn't have the proper context. Because it's like, you know these things, but you don't pay attention to it. So many men in Japan between the ages of 25 and 35 were adopted. And I'm like, what are you talking about, G? Well, essentially, the Japanese culture, because someone posted an article uh, about how some companies in Japanese culture have been in business a thousand years. And essentially, there was a great deal of uh, subsidization going on. But if a father realized that his son wasn't of enough business snuff to run the business, he would outsource. <laughs> he would find some dude and say, oh, you marry my daughter and you get company. I mean, seriously, yeah. conversation went just like that. So dude would come in, get adopted, marry the daughter, and then they would pass the company on to him. Now, what's really interesting is a lot of these adopted sons outperform the legacy sons. Which shows you outsourcing works. <laughs> it works, right? And I looked at that and essentially... It's just really, really funny when you get to the point where you're looking at people from a standpoint of actual accomplishment versus legacy and entitlement. And that's another thing that really messes people up with their money. Many people feel that, OK, uh, going back to that insipid song, I haven't paid my bills. I haven't done this. But you know what? I deserve to go on a vacation. Oh, I haven't worked for two years and I got a job, but I feel the need to go on a vacation. You know, people are going to argue with me and be mad. And I don't really give a fuck. But if your ass hasn't worked for two years or three years or been productive, you don't need a fucking vacation. You need to get busy. And that's part of the with disrupted money because I actually... I had to talk someone out of it. Dude was set up. You know, it's just like, you know, things started getting good. And I said, okay. You are about to start spending money. For the last four years, you've been living on hardly fucking nothing. If you follow my advice, you will be paid in ways you can't imagine. And, you know, we I mean, I was just like, he was like that horse, right? And, you know, you just had to, like, put the stun gun on him. Because he was just like, let me, I want to go. I want to go. I want to. I'm like, dude, calm the fuck down. So, Brad, we'll name him Brad. Everyone's fucking Brad today. And Brad listened to me, right? And he calmed down and he followed my plan and then he got hurt maybe two years later. But because Brad had money, it was more of a unfortunate event versus a financial fucking tragedy. So this is the thing. And, you know, and I, I say this to you, Brad, Brad to be Brad, the second Brad, the third Brad, the fucking 10th, right? Essentially, if you go through this program and you learn these steps, you'll always have money. You'll always have cash flow. You'll always have a little some, some, somewhere. And you'll never be what I call flat ass broke again, which is scary. I remember I was dating this chick and her 50 some year old uncle from another state called her for 20 fucking dollars. I am not bullshitting you. He called her for, I heard the message because he left the message on the answering machine. She was one of the few people I knew with a home phone and a cell phone. Dude was begging for $20. Tw tw $20. I would cut my fucking throat before I begged someone for $20. 
$20. That's fucking disgusting to beg someone for $20. And uh, he was a career system abuser. Or I guess still is. I don't know. And um, that's horrible. That's terrible. I remember as a kid. We had situations because one of the reasons that I have learned the mantra of manage your money or your money's going to manage you is uh, my mother was extremely bad with money. I'm talking about real bad. I'm talking about scary bad. Talking about. And I saw it. You know, a lot of people don't want to observe and examine their parents because it's like that's mom or dad. I don't I don't hold such sanctions. A fuck up is a fuck up, even if it's your parent. That's just reality. And, you know, people go like, well, that's harsh. You shouldn't say that about someone's mom or dad. You know what? Let's let's talk about that. I want to talk about that because your mom and dad has a job. And I'm quite sure if they are fuck up at home, they were fucking up at work and they were told that they were fuck up. And it doesn't matter if they were your mom or dad because they were fucking up. So when you start to loosen yourself and regurgitate all that stuff and really look at situations as they are, Brad, not like you want them to be. When you can say, I love my mom, I love my dad, but they're fucked up people or they have fucked up habits. And be honest with that, that frees you from a lot of stuff. But if you like, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. No, no, no. Because I was uh, on Facebook one day and uh, there were some people who were romanticizing their parents. And I was like, who are those motherfuckers? That's not the same motherfuckers I grew up with. Who are th- really? For real. And I was, just, and I, I stayed out the conversation. I just stayed out the conversation because one of my legacies is I have an extremely good memory. I have messed up a lot of chicks because I can like I don't have like endemic memory, but damn near close because I can fucking go chapter and verse and like on such and such day this happened and just bring that stuff home. Um, and I remember. I remember how horrible these people were. I lived next door to them. And I was just like, what? Those are not the same people. And this is what we like to do to make ourselves feel better about past experiences is to romanticize some shit like this thing in, quote, the black community of kings and queens. I always thought that was bullshit. It's like, instead of claiming you some shit that you're not, make yourself something worthy, you know? And... I, I I just reject a lot of that stuff. But when you're living on these false narratives, Brad, and when you're inhaling these false narratives, Brad, you're living a false life. And then if you're living a false life and you're romanticizing bad things that happened in the past, Brad, you have a false life. You have false memories. You have false dreams. How the fuck can you be real? Brad. So that's what's going to be happening. You're going to get more of that in the Hustler Mindset Project going forward. It's going to be different curriculum. And what I'm doing, and for those of you, I have to let you know, who are already in the other one. There's two sites. It's two. My Kung Fu's twice as tough. I'm not moving you yet. You will be moved. But right now, you can stay in bed, you know, roll over. Don't hit the snooze button. That's going to happen. I'm just going to start this new content on a new site. And due to one of the snazzy new features, I can move it over to where you are and don't disrupt nothing. It's like, cool. Uh, Probably going to do is just upload uh, on both sites. And that way you'll get the stuff where you are and you don't have to move and we'll have all this other stuff. And then the new people have the new site with the new content. And the first class is disruptive money. We're going to talk about some stuff. I'm going to tell you what I do. I'm going to tell you about some secrets, some tricks, because... I moved back to credit thing because once again, bad credit typically outside of calamity or someone getting sick or, you know, you just get fired and you can't find a job for 18 months. I mean, to me, if your credit goes bad like that, that's just some shit that happened. But if you're making good money and you've not been laid off and your credit's fucked up, it's you, Brad. (laughs) It's you. So that's no excuse. It's just piss poor money management. So we're going to do disruptive money. We're going to talk about that. Put you on a path to where you are making better use of the money you already have. So when you get more money, 
it does better things for you in your life versus just disappearing in the ozone or you doing stupid shit like it was Saturday night and you spent $600 and you don't have shit to account for it. Do you know you can start an internet business for 600 bucks? Seriously. Conundrum Publishing, which is closed, because it didn't fit where I'm going in a new direction. I started for $287 and did not reinvest any money. Well, not even reinvest. The money that came into it, maybe two and a half years later, was from revenue. There was no outside money coming in. See, there's a lot of businesses that you can start online and make livable income and not take out some huge bank loan or get yourself in all kinds of crazy debt or you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can do Brad that you can do but you must first get the hustler's mindset you must learn to think differently and open your mind up on a new level and really really enhance what you're doing and then enhance what you can bring in so then life is just more better all the way around, Brad. All right. So for those of you who want only the disruptive circus, which is disruptive money, disruptive economy, that's learning how to sell shit, kids, disruptive wealth, disruptive man. Now, all of this is beta founder status. Now, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked, Brad. That means the price is going up, bitches, at some point. So do not, and it's going to sound very anti-customer friendly, don't email me two weeks from now, like, if the price changes. I don't see it changing. It could. It just depends on what happens. And like, hey, well, you know, can I still get? No. No, you can't. No, Brad. Just think of me as that super hot chick with the double D's, the the 22 inch waist and legs that go on for days. And no, you're not fucking. No, it ain't happening because I like girls. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <clears throat> I am feeling much better. I'm feeling much better. So essentially, seriously, this is what's going on. So go ahead and get in now. And like I said, you got time before it jumps because what I want to do is get the first module of disruptive money together. Then get everybody on, get all the websites and stuff resolving, all this other stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's several moving parts. That's why it's called the disruptive circus. There's this ring, this ring, and this ring. And that's all the stuff that's going on. And I'm just psh, cracking the whip, Brad. So get in, sign up tomorrow will be the first Ask Me Anything Tuesday. And if you're not on the email list, you will not get an invitation. I may change that later, but right now, I, I want to gauge the effectiveness of that because I've come to a new point with that type of marketing. So if you're not on the list, the list is below. And will this Ask Me Anything Tuesday? Ask me any damn question you want. But you only get one question. See, if you think you're going to come in there and ask me 18 different questions and hog up the whole session, you are boo-boo the fool. You need to hire me for a consult straight up. So that's the deal. Hopefully, you know, everyone's on the same sheet of paper. Everyone knows what's going on. Everyone knows what the expectations are. And we should be good to go. All right, this is Glendon, and I will see you on the good side. Or the Hustler's Mindset Project.